Hello, welcome to another one of our videos and today's a quick one just looking at um, how you can do a basic mobility uh, assessment on yourself. So understand that some of these tests are not the um, the best ones for the actually correcting the problem but they're a great way to assess it and also they're not the best ones for a, a proper assessment with a person helping you or a therapist with you because they're obviously much more precise and effective but this is how you would complete it by yourself so I'm going to start with um, the assessments from the working from the neck all the way down to the feet so first one's just the basic neck um, neck sort of testing for lateral flexion so you're basically just using your hand now you could also if you wanted to this is where maybe it becomes a bit more effective in terms of a, a corrective stretch you could actually use your other hand so Mel's hand here she could actually hold the box here to create an anchor point so then you get the feeling of the of the muscle being pulled this way and then her hand on top of her head pulling it that way but basically as a test really you're just trying to observe any differences between the right side and the left side um, and you know, ideally like um, if you had you, obviously on your own you won't be able to measure this you just got to go by feel or you could use a mirror but you want to try and aim for about a normal range of motion would be between about 25 and 40 degrees. Um, anything less than that, less than the 25, it probably do, works out that that you're uh, a little bit too tight. But it's hard again, hard to measure that by yourself. So you just got to go by feel. Really, just probably better to just pay attention to which side is worse. All right, so that'll be the first one. So that'll be a simple assessment that you could use for that. Next one is working out how tight the internal rotators of the shoulders are, so to be like the muscles of the pecs and the lats to determine if they're creating stiffness at the at the um, shoulder joint itself. You can see here there's a bit of a difference between the right. It's usually the problem is the bottom hand coming up. That's usually where you'll see most of the problem in most people, and in this case it's a little bit stiffer on this side for Mel, where she just doesn't quite have. There's a bigger gap. In a perfect world, the fingers would link together, all right. But um, if there, if there's a problem on this on this arm that's up in the air, it's usually a problem with the lats, or there's some type of an impingement that's limiting the ability to lift the arm up into full extension. But often it's the the front of the shoulder at being mainly probably pec minor that's a problem. Now this isn't the ideal stretch to correct it, but it's a great way to measure any improvements that you may be using to improve your flexibility um, and mobility of that joint. Now this next one's an impingement test, so it's not really a holding drill, it's more like a moving the elbow up and down. And again, this is where you want to do both sides to observe if there's a potential impingement on one side. So so you, you've got to do both arms, usually starting with the, the side that you suspect is good, and the one that's sore you do second. And what you're really trying to look for is if the, if the arm can glide up which Mel can in both cases here, and you should be able to get that elbow pointing up with that hand sitting on the other shoulder. What this does is it creates, if I just take that back for a second, um, what this does is when you're at that, when you've got it closed off like this, um, if I just go back, so when it's there, basically the tendon up here, the supraspinatus, that is the one that usually gets frayed or injured in a rotator cuff injury, it's really got limited space by closing it off like that. If if the shoulder is healthy, you'll still be able to glide the arm up and down like she did. But if it's got um, a problem and the space is completely gone, you'll feel it sort of really gets stuck and even pain. So it's a, it's a great way to determine if there's um, a positive impingement or not. All right. So. All right, so we've looked at the head and the shoulders in, in, in these first three. Now we're going to look at the thoracic spine. So this first one's an extension test. I usually do this one standing against the wall, but I can do it lying. Um, now, you just got to be very, pay attention to the lower back trying to arch itself here. If you don't really, you want to limit that. So you want to encourage yourself to keep some core activation there so that this does not activate by, by trying to make the test look good. Because what you're trying to do is what Dylan's doing here, trying to get full range of motion with the arms pretty straight, and the thumb should be able to touch the ground, but without the lower back trying to arch itself at any point. All right. 
Um, so it's a, a great way to observe if there's a, a thoracic extension limitation. And you might observe that maybe one arm is lim limited more than the others, than the other. So it could be the left is more, you can't reach there, but the right can. Um, and a, a lot of these tests are like that. They're really trying to identify um, where specifically a, a limitation might be hiding. All right, so that would be the extension test. Then we want to look at thoracic rotation. Now, I've done these drills in many video videos before, and uh, the reason now this is one example where the test is actually a great exercise. So it's a great test because you can't cheat on it. So I obviously start. I always start with the hand behind the back like this to begin with. This tests the lower part of the thoracic region, and I want to observe how much rotation you have. You don't want to make any conclusions until you've seen both sides. You want to see what, what one side does versus the other. You can see how he comes pretty much all the way around. You know, it's pretty much almost 180 degrees, and he's get a good neck turn as well. So you look at the other side, and you try to make a note of, is this any different? Is it less than the other side, or is it the same? If it's the same, it's good. Usually, like if they don't have any problems, you usually will see them pretty similar, but sometimes not. Sometimes there's some problem that's about to surface, and then this uh, assessment can predict it. All right, so that'll be the first way I'll do it. The second way, I'll put my hands on the side of the head. And now this tests the upper quadrant of the uh, of the thoracic region. And again, you're trying to observe any differences between left and right. And I really want to, really aiming for, in all of these, um, where, where there's like almost 180 degrees uh, of rotation. So you can see here, he's pretty much made that, you know, so I think he, if I played it a bit more, I see, then he makes it just there. All right, so where if someone's sort of stuck out on that angle, they've, they've sort of lost this much range of motion. And again, you might see that happen on one side, but not the other. All right, and and that tells you specifically which side you might need to work on um, with a lot more exercises, trigger point things, maybe investigate other things that you may have missed. All right, and so it's a great way to sort of observe it, and like I said, it's a great corrective exercise in its own right. All right, so that's one way I might test the thoracic rotation. The other way is sort of a more seated one, and that's where I might use a stick. Um, and again, some, and on this particular one here, actually Dylan does um, sh present with a, a limitation on one side that we didn't see in the kneeling one there. So this is a little bit different. So. A little bit of like the impingement thing again. So you sort of got that impingement with the shoulder. Uh, and you know, all, you, all he's got to do is simply rotate around. And again, you've got to make sure that there's no cheating through the lumbar spine and the legs that make this test look good. All right, so it's quite a simple one to do, but um, surprisingly quite hard for some people. And you notice this, this time, he doesn't quite get as far on this rotating that way as he did the first way. So it's a, it's a clever way to sort of observe something that maybe you've missed. So you're ideally trying to reach about 50 degrees. So he's pretty much close to it. He doesn't have any neck or shoulder injuries either. So um, so you would expect him to be pretty good. All right, so there's our, you know, so so far we've done the neck, internal rotators and impingement test, and then a thoracic extension with two thoracic rotation tests. So quite a few things through the upper body that we've uh, tried to observe and see if there's anything that we specifically need to work on. All right, so now we work our way down to the, um, so now we're going to work our way down to the hips and that, all right? So let's have a look at those. Okay, so now we're looking at the hips. This one's the, called the Thomas test, very sort of classic test that most people would test for the tightness through the hip flexors, mainly the psoas muscle. So all you've got to really do is just pull your knee towards your chest and you want to sit on a box maybe a little bit higher. We probably could have had this a bit higher. And so the leg just hangs off the table. Um, and then what, you, what you're trying to make note of, if his hip was tight, like when he pulls his knee towards his chest, this, this hip that, that we're testing, this one, if it's too tight, it would be actually sort of lifting up into the air like so. All right, it wouldn't be able to relax itself and hang down as such, because this hip is as it doesn't have the ability to separate itself. So that's where it's quite a um, quite a clever way to to observe it. Um, I, I get, not a great corrective exercise in its own right. Again, it can if there's hip impingement issues, it might be difficult to pull the knee towards the chest. So there might be more issues with this hip. 
um, than than the one that's on the ground. And it's not, I, I don't really like the test too much myself, but on your own, it's a good way that you know, especially if you've got a severe lordosis, um, which would be quite noticeable in a standing position anyway. This might con sort of give you a bit more conclusions as to which side is is more problematic than the other. All right, now this next one is where we're going to be looking at internal and external rotation. Now, these are far from ideal doing it on your own because it's you can easily cheat. And Dylan, I did, he would have been better to have his knees together. Um, but I was sort of trying to show how many people might do this test. Um, and basically all you're doing, so this is an internal rotation test. And you see how he almost moved that leg outward by moving that his, his femur there. And you, all you're really trying to look for is what angle of degrees he can move that, that tibia outward. And then um, you want to, again, observe a left and a right. All right, so he's got quite a fair bit of internal rotation there. That's pretty good. You know, so someone who really lacking, 30 degrees would be about normal, all right? Um, someone with no pain, really no limitation, anything less than that. But it, you probably would not find there's some issues going on at the hips. Um, all right, so, but it's again on your own, it's very difficult to actually measure that by yourself. You would better off a therapist and they would usually do this test lying down. You're lying down on the table and they're pulling your leg for you, but, um, but on your own, that's the next best way. All right, so then, so you've also got, so we've got the internal rotation. He's again doing that with the um, the left and the right. Then we want to have external rotation where, where the leg just goes the other way. Um, it's hard to say. Sometimes it's a lot easier for some people to do this one. Other times the one before it was a lot harder. But again, you're just really trying to make a note of is there a difference with the left and the right? And it might tell you what you might need to work on when you're working with stability exercises because you're going to find a severe um, limitation with with what it can do, all right? So there's our basic, so we've got the Thomas test and then the two internal rotation tests. Now we want to look at a basic posterior um, mobility, ex which is, this is a bit like the thoracic rotation before. It's where the test itself is quite a good exercise to correct it. This is our basic 90-90 stretch. There's many ways to do this stretch. This is, I found this is probably the, the least aggressive of them, because if they're too aggressive, they really like it. It can cause issues for a start. Sometimes the knee itself can get like twisted quite a lot, but it might like give you false readings of what's what's going on, just because the test the exercise is too hard. So I find this one's a lot more effective at um at uh, giving me a like a fair fair assessment of what's going on. And again, I'm really looking for left and right differences. I'm always looking for those things to tell me which side is more problematic because you might see things come up in two legs, bending exercises in particular, but you can't tell which side it is, so you really have to investigate deeper. And this is one way that you might be able to do that. All right? So you're trying to look for how much can they bend forward? Do they lose their lumbar curve, which you can't see from here because he's not side on, but you know, so does he? is he rolling out too early? Um, is this knee lifting off the ground? That will be one other thing you'll often see, this knee lifting off the ground. All those little differences between the good side and the bad side. All right, so it's quite a, quite a simple test to look for um, obvious differences. All right, so now let's look at the next, next one of the hip and quads. All right. Okay, so this is the next one in the, in the hip series, and this is really looking at quadricep as much as the hip. So this one's a, obviously a real problematic one for a lot of people with knee pain. Make sure you put a cushion under the knee there when you're doing that so you don't put pressure on the knee itself. All right, but quite a simple test to do. Um, again, you're looking for the differences with left and right, um, and, and you're trying to make any, a note of it, like how much flexion is at the knee. So are they able to really flex the knee quite easily? Do they get any pain in their lower back when they sit up? Because sometimes people will actually just really arch their back to make to get sitting upright. So this is common for like sacroiliac problems and things like that. So you're really looking, do you have good knee flexion for a start? So anyone with knee pain, I'm always investigating that. Maybe indicating tight quadriceps or tight hip itself. And then are they able to um, get their pelvis to sit in the right position so it can stay neutral? All right. So it's quite a handy one for knee pain and back pain. Uh, quite problematic for many people, this one. All right. So... That's, that's the one that follows on from the posterior one that we did with Dylan with the 90-90 stretch. 
Now, after we've done that, we want to look at hamstrings. So this is, uh, so there's a couple of ways we might do that as well. So it's not just one. So the simple one is obviously lying on your back using a band. All right, so you might start with the bent knee and you're really observing a couple of things here. So firstly, obviously, does she have like a full range of motion? So it's almost 90 degree angle at the hip with the knee slightly bent. With the knee slightly bent, we get like a hamstring muscle stretch. Um, if she does, if she straightens the knee is when we will see like more of a sciatic nerve stretch. So we'll see how she does that in a second. And and this is also this is also still really good. All right, so see that it's pretty good range of motion. The other thing is this leg on the floor. If you start to see this leg lifting up off the ground, then a bit like the Thomas test before, we know there's issues with hip separation. That person can't separate the hip very well, so there's issues going on with with that. All right, so but in terms of the hamstring length tension test. It's quite a simple way to do it. Also, the other thing is the back won't round out here. So you really doing it lying on the ground is way better because you can ensure that you've got like this neutral position more effectively than if you're trying to stand up, do the old hurdle stretch as such. All right, so that's one of the ways that we might test the hamstring. Let's look at the next one. Okay, so this next one is more looking at the hamstrings from up near the hip instead of near the knee which is what Mel was doing then. So this is like uh, where a lot of people use toe touching to do, to measure their hamstring flexibility. Um, and this is kind of like a deadlift in a way. I would argue this is actually almost a movement exercise than a pure static stretching. But we're testing, the obviously, this leg that's on the floor. So this leg has to straighten right out. This one's allowed to bend. That's why we've got it on a step. All right, so... Again, we can check left versus right, but we actually can observe his hip action as with it and how much of it does he use his lower back to try and reach all the way. So it's where it's almost like a movement pattern more than a static stretch as such. All right, and you'll see if, they, if their knee tries to bend at all, and you can see he's sort of really fighting with that. Um, it'd be easier if he could, and you can see how much his back rounded out on that one. All right, so it's a quite a simple... A simple test to observe, but really if the person doesn't sit their hips back like a Romanian deadlift, it's almost impossible to get down to the floor. If, if they're staying there, there's, they have no choice but to round their back out. So it's almost like a coordination type of movement as much as it is a mobility one. So, um, And again, you can observe what's going to happen with left and right, and this will come up when you start to do movement testing and you would have already have seen it in this assessment stage um, and how the strategy that they use to try and achieve that range of motion where things are going to buckle and go wrong all right this is what this is the whole point of the assessment is to try and find things out before you start applying loads or doing complicated things and, and something goes wrong all right so that's our our toe touch hamstring test um, and the last one we'll do is an ankle mobility one so I would usually do this against the wall, but just for the sake of the video, because it's easier to see here, we'll just do it without the wall and just imagine that there's one. But obviously this is called the knee to walls um, stretch, right? So what you're basically trying to do is get dorsiflexion at the ankle here. And if you see, if they were against the wall, his knee would be touching the wall like this. And there'd be a quite a good distance away from the wall, see that? And usually that distance there should be about uh, 8 to 10 centimetres would be about a normal range. All right. If the person, again, you're observing if there's, if there's any difference to the left and right. Um, and if the, you can see how he's got his hand down around his heel there. If this works. This test works better without shoes, by the way, because a lot of the shoes these days have really high heels on it, which makes the test look better. So it's always better without, without shoes on. And you see how he's holding his heel down. You don't want the heel to lift off because, again, it makes the knee come forward, but it just means that you've uh, compromised your knee and you're not getting the most out of the ankle. All right, so a great way to, to sort of see if there's a difference with the left and right ankles. And by this stage, you've done every sort of joint from head to toe, all right, and you should be able to work out, okay, where are my imbalances? Where do I need to spend more time with? And... Um, and then you can develop your exercises and your various stretches and other things around it to improve areas that are missing or lacking in mobility. 
All right, so check the description below because there's a lot of links with extra information that you can do you look at for the exercises I might use to correct these. This is just the simple way to assess yourself um, with some easy ways to measure and also to measure your progress to see if you're improving. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed that and it helps you out and we'll see you on our next video.